reticulated pythons love primates. They love to eat primates. Mm -hmm. Orangutan, siamang, and human beings. Humans are, humans are primates, you guys. I was going to invite you to go inside here with the snake if that's something you can, you can deal with. Do you guys think I should go in there with the snake? Okay, you guys, as you can see, we are back inside on this Louisville stormy, snowy day. It's not really stormy, it's just really snowy. Anyways, we are at the Herp Aquarium building to go see a very big snake, one of my personal favorites. And we're gonna learn a little bit of a story about how special this virgin snake was. Let's go. How's it going? Hey, Jordan. What's Good to meet you. I'm Will. Will? Yes. So what do you do here? I am the keeper three, the lead zookeeper in the Herp Aquarium. I've been here for 26 years. 26 yeah. years. Yeah. So this seems to be a trend. Seems like just yesterday, man. 26, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really above 26. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> joking. I'm messing with you. I'm way older than I look. Who do we have behind us here in this exhibit? Okay, what we have here is it, our large, giant, reticulated python and her name is Thelma, mm -hmm. and she is the snake that gave parthenogenic birth. Explain parthenogenic birth. <laughs> People are not gonna know what that means. What does okay, that, mean? that means birth without a male. Mm. So this snake, we, we acquired her. She had been raised, separated, and alone. Uh, we maintained her alone, mm -hmm. and uh, one day we noticed she was in a, in a high coil, mm -hmm which is that posture that they get when they're on eggs. Mm -hmm. And we all rushed in there and looked, and sure enough, there were these eggs. Now we thought for sure that these eggs would be infertile, right. but we candled them. They had vein development. They, they were good eggs. Right. So then we went ahead and decided to incubate some of those eggs, and we ended up hatching six. Wow. And we did a uh, collaborative effort with the university where we sent off tissue samples uh, from the snakes, not only from the babies, but from the mother as well. Mm -hmm. And it was determined that they they were clones, that they weren't, it wow. was indeed parthenogenic birth. So um, you guys, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you for a second here. This is getting very, very sciencey. <laughs> I hope you all can keep up. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine right now. I I'm I got everything he's saying. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, to, no, full, I, I to, full, to fully it. explain it, it gets sure. even more sciencey than that. It it, it kind of gets even above my head with mm -hmm. with the the testing of of all the genetics and everything. It, it, it's but that's the basic breakdown that that'll help you understand what's going on. Awesome. Were we going somewhere after this? Where well, are we headed? I was going to invite you to go inside here with the snake if that's something you can. You can deal with. Do you guys think I should go in there with the snake? We don't have to. We don't. Okay. We don't have to. Let's do it. Let's do All right. It. Let's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're we're inside. Yeah, we're right in here now. now. Yes. Yes. Um, there was a little bit of hesitation on the outside looking in you guys. I guarantee I was joking. I actually really enjoy snakes. I've held reticulated pythons before. I'm a professional though, so don't do it if you're not a snake person, right? Definitely so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what, we, what we say is that if you look at a snake, unless you can say its scientific name, in other words, unless you can identify it, right. don't grab it. Makes sense. Leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about sure, Thelma sure. here. So, how much does she weigh? And 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 like, give me some background about her a little bit. Okay. About uh, the natural history of of reticulated pythons. Okay. Well, they're they're, they're from Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Sumatra, Borneo. They are the world's longest snake. The record that we trust and believe in is thirty two feet nine inches. Mm -hmm. We believe that she is just over 21 feet, maybe close to 22. So would you say the average is a little bit closer to that 20 feet mark? Well, what, what, we, what we say is, is that there are large snakes and there are giant snakes. 
And when once they hit 20 feet, they're a giant snake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so not every reticulated python will get 20 feet. The, the females grow larger than the males. Right. And, and not every female will hit 20 feet. Though there are a lot of islands in that area and the snakes get isolated and go on their own evolutionary path on some of those different island chains. Mm -hmm. And so some of them are smaller than others and others are larger. Mm -hmm. And in the places where they get really big, um, the people don't. <laughs> and as a result, reticulated pythons love primates. They love to eat primates. Mm -hmm. Orangutan, Siamang, and human beings. Humans are, humans are primates, you guys, if you didn't know right. at home for primates. Right, so there are legitimate records of these snakes eating people. They will do that. Mm. There are places in the Philippines where one out of four men have been attacked by a reticulated python. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you here. Okay, okay. I have to stop you here. Okay. They should definitely have a healthy respect for snakes. Healthy respect for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yes. I, yes, there's yeah. no reason to fear them. Right. We're, look, we're standing a Two. couple of feet away from her. Right. So th there is no reason to be scared. Yes. Uh, but there are, there are reasons to be smart. Yes. And uh, people that are, that are injured by these snakes are usually grabbing them. They might be drinking alcohol. Uh, They're something. doing reckless things. Yes. Yeah. And yes. you and I are both also uh, bigger individuals, bigger uh, adult men. Yes. So we're, uh, I feel like, do you think we could still be even be a sizable a meal that they could take down? No, but they don't know that and they'll try. Right. Because we're, we're both, I'm six, whatever. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and you're about my, almost my height. So we're big people. So, okay. One, she's huge. And she has this uh, position where she's kind of tucked in. Yes. Um, what is the purpose of that? That is pure snake comfort. You know, there is nothing that a snake likes more than to be tucked tightly mm -hmm. into a dark, warm, confined space. And you can see that that ledge sticks up and then there's the wall and she can just get in coil in that and just feel nice and tight, mm -hmm. comfortable. And actually that's an exterior wall. Mm -hmm. And so it's exposed to the colder temperature. She is actually thermoregulating mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people look at a snake and they say, it's not doing anything. Well, it, uh, really it is. She uh, just last week before mm -hmm. you came here, she ate six rabbits. Wow. She's and big, huge adult rabbits. Mm -hmm. So she has six rabbits in her belly right now. Mm -hmm. And she is in that tight, she is digesting. Mm -hmm. And so she has chosen the place in this in this room mm -hmm. that is the exact right temperature mm -hmm. for her, and she's digesting. Yeah. What is uh, you mentioned? What is thermal regulation for the for the people out there? What is thermal regulation? Oh, that is the maintaining your body temperature. So, so that she, is she, what. So she, since she is a cold blooded animal, she has to do it herself. That's right. right. That's right. We have heat pads in this part. in this room. Mm -hmm. There are there are two heat pads that are up in the 90s. Mm -hmm. We have a, a water pool that's in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. and then they can choose to go wherever they want in this room to get the, to be the temperature that they need to be. Before we head out, I wanted to take a look at something here. Sure. Do you sure. mind if you mind? I, okay. Um, so this. I have a snake hook at home. Okay. You know, I, I've you, you've seen it, Darren. I have a snake hook at home. And I, you know, caught snakes with it and handled snakes with it. Um, I have not once used one this large. Okay. So this is meant for giant snakes. That's a boa hook or a python hook. Yeah. This is a big one. Big hook. So it's a big hook. I'm impressed. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. So are, are we uh, are we heading out of here now? Well, we were going to go, but actually we we have some work to do around here today, Jordan. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to help us with that or not, but. Our snake is uh, is shedding today, mm -hmm. and she needs a little bit of extra humidity. I wondered if you might want to help us with the hose and 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 spray her down to help her shed. So here's the thing, you know, I didn't I, I came here to work, um, but but work on filming. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. You know, but you know, you know what? Go ahead, put me to work. I mean, are you guys paying me for this? No, no. Okay, that's cool. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a joke. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. All right. As a zookeeper, I'm very particular about my hoses. I want to make sure they are nice and neat. I want to spray the camera guy. Look, yeah, look, look at that skin there. Is that okay? That's just fine. Now, do you want me to direct it on her, or I got go in the air? I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it on her face, mm -hmm. but anywhere else on the wall, all around her, the soil, mm -hmm. her body. Mm -hmm. 
she's tucking in. She's like, get that away from me for now. But this is what's going to like really help her out. And by tomorrow and, morning, all that skin will come right off mm -hmm. just for, because of what you're doing right now. Yeah, this is, this is a big, big snake, man. These I love snakes and so much. And I'm sure people are out at home thinking, is he really doing this? Like, right, I, right. I don't I love snakes like snakes are perfectly like I'm I'm safe right now. Yeah, and just think, man, there's there's hundreds of millions of people working today. Yeah. And you and I, you and I are doing this. We're, we're, we're <laughs> holding down a snake. Yeah, man. Who can say they've done that in a day? Like, who, like nobody, except you guys every day or whenever needed, right? Yeah. Look, so she definitely is enjoying this and she, cause I know they get a little dumpy, right? They do. They do, they when, do. when they start shedding. Thank you for your help. And thank you. She, for she definitely appreciates it. Look at her, look at, look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> I love snakes. Even even I feel like snakes have personalities, and I know a lot of people don't feel that way. But oh, they do. I they 100%. every snake has its own personality. That is the truth. I love it. That is the truth. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This was awesome, yeah. and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank Shoot, you. yeah, thank you for your time. Thanks thank for helping. You. Yeah, awesome. Got your hands dirty a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely a love for reptiles here. Yes. Are you a big reptile fan? Yes. 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 yes I mean, we're in a reptile building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I work here 40 hours a week, and this has been my job for 26 years. Mm -hmm. But then when I go home, I have 600 reptiles at my house that I take care of. So this is just the beginning. I spend more hours working when I'm not here with reptiles than I do when I'm here. Okay. Um, yeah. He said 600. 600 yeah. reptiles. That's that's a that's a lot of reptiles. Yeah. Sorry, are you counting like are there like babies and everything? Yeah, yeah. 600. Yeah. 600. Yeah. Okay. All right. Where? Where where are they? Do you have like a mansion secretly? No, no. Are you like no, the, the no. richest zookeeper in the world? Is no, that... definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. No, it, it's uh I'm trying to think. I, I get um creative. <laughs> they say that I know how to utilize space very well. <laughs> so basically he has like, so you have my dream probably. I think he has like, like a forest built in your house somehow. Like you have plants all over the place. All the way upstairs. Yes. 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 And, and they're literally just living. Yes. Like, like your house, if you walked into it, I'm sure it'd be like a tropical climate. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. Up there. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah. And, and actually when it, when it comes to people that work in reptile departments, mm -hmm. I am most, de I mean, 600, that's a lot, but a lot. but all of us that work down here, we have animals at home. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All of us do. So you you're, know, you're, snakes. You're and, living my dream. One day. I, we're I, all trying to live our own dream. I get that. Yeah. Well, one day, yeah. I, one day <laughs> yeah. I plan to have, uh, I plan to have a, a room specifically dedicated that has literally dirt on the floors and animals just around somehow. I see. I don't okay. know. Yeah. I, I want a tree growing in my house somehow. I don't know. Uh -huh. It's yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I, whatever.